What's up guys? My name is Michael and as you can see today we are not in the studio and the reason is it's Sunday and I'm at home which doesn't happen too often I mean most of the times even on Sundays I like to go to the studio to yeah work on my photography look through images work whatever it is but uh, today um, I used my free time and the really nice weather to go out and shoot with the X-T3 and although I do have the X-T3 for quite some time now this is the first time that I really got to play with the camera the way I usually do and the reason is that I needed to make sure that the project for Fujifilm would work out fine so I really needed to concentrate on that make sure everything um, yeah works out so today I enjoyed some photography and I played with the camera so I grabbed my bike and uh, drove around town um, more than 30 kilometers today to take some pictures and actually the sky is really really beautiful today so the clouds look really really nice all the images that we're gonna go through now have been taken on the Fuji X-T3 and um, we're gonna sort them out and uh, talk about these images and um, probably I'm gonna edit some of them as well but um, I also wanted to show you what this camera is capable of and what kind of um, yeah what kind of images you can expect with the film simulations and the adjustments on the shadows and highlights and uh, color saturation uh, you can get straight out of camera so the images are not processed yet and um, I like to use Capture One for processing even JPEG files. I do really enjoy the interface of Lightroom but I must say that uh, Capture One's um, image engine and not only the RAW conversion also the JPEG uh, image processing is superior to uh, Lightroom. Um, yeah coming from Aperture then I switched to Lightroom and now I switched to Capture One yeah it's kind of a high learning curve but um, we will go more into that as soon as Capture One is able to work with the uh, raw files from the X-T3 which is currently not the case but that will happen pretty pretty soon so let's go into the images and I'm gonna guide you through what I did today. Let's do it. So welcome to the image editing session in Capture One. Excuse me if the image is shaking sometimes, it's because my table is kind of shaky and once I start moving or hit the keyboard too hard, the camera starts to shake as well. But let's go into the images. The first few images are from the so-called Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is a place in my town in which it's legal to spray and um, make graffitis. So you see a graffiti here that has been put on the ground. And um, what I like to do uh, for the start is to, to go in and check the details of this image. So we zoom in to 100%. Uh, straight into the middle of the circle where I focused and you can see that even at 200% the image is perfectly sharp but not too sharp and what I really also like is the way that the contrast came out here let's have a look at the histogram you can see it's almost perfect and you, you get a little detail down here in the edge and yeah it's just the way that I would also edit this image so there's nothing to complain here um, 
I like the colors, I like the shape, I like I like this image. Um but, but but to be honest, I'm not the artist here in this image. For all of these images that were shot here in the Hall of Fame, I'm not the artist. I just took the photograph. So if we go into this image, we also have to zoom in to see that it has focus and details because to me it seems a little soft when we look at it in in full uh yeah in the way it is right now i would need to add contrast and or clarity or both because it seems a little flat now this could have been done in camera for sure so i think i would do it like this increase contrast a little more and um, increase clarity and uh, structure and you can see that again when we zoom in um, it looks way more uh, detailed than it used to because this is the way it was and that's the way it is so yeah it might be too much for some of you but I like this punchy look which we had here and if we uh, combine these images they would match together much nicer like this so the thing with the uh, camera internal let's call it pre-production not post-production if you if you choose your contrast if you choose your saturation your film simulation and stuff you can do that and you can get awesome results but you need to take your time to set it up which is not a big deal most of the time because you can see the way it will look like in um, your viewfinder and on your display as well so you see I, I mean you could use these images without touching them but what I feel most of the time, let's go ahead and, and do something about this picture here. I really enjoy um, playing with the images. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play around with some presets that um, I have in my um, in Capture One. Um, actually, these really look pretty nice most of the time it, it always depends if you have if you're looking for something special then maybe you should try to to achieve that by yourself but if you're open just like in this image I don't have a clear idea what it needs to look like and most of the times I know it when I see it so what we're gonna do here add some more contrast bring it down the exposure down a little bit further and yeah this is much more what I'm more more saturation and this is really what I would like this image to look like so if we have a look at the image before and after it's not a huge difference I have changed the colors with the preset a little bit but if we zoom in then um, we were now at 100%. Let's go here where the, there's some structure on the wall. Let's go right here. Then you can see that before and after there's a big difference and the structure came out really, really well, but it needed a little more punch. And the thing about the contrast, which is the main source for this punch that I'm talking about, this crispiness the, the way that it, you, you you would really think that you can touch the image and, and feel the structure on your screen to get that you need contrast and I like to play with contrast in post-production not because the camera did something wrong but because I can fine-tune that much more easily and if I put too much contrast while shooting then I lose detail and I don't want to lose detail so that's my image and you can see that when we start combining these images it really works out beautifully and now we can also see that the first image would need some more punch as well so 
let's try something we're going to copy these settings and put them on this image you can see that it is too bright now I'm going to darken it a little bit yeah I like it before and after yeah maybe I don't like the colors let's remove this um, this style so we can keep the original colors and I think I will need to brighten it up a little bit so yeah it's always a little back and forth with uh, what I'm doing here but if you want a series of image to work together then yeah it's something that you need to take your time so let's go on we have some more graffitis here we can we could try to post uh, to, to paste the processing that we did before right onto this one it looks pretty well I think I'm gonna make this one black and white because basically it is black and white and yeah it comes out beautifully check out this structure I mean it's really like you could touch that we had wonderful light and um, yeah same goes for that one I think with a little more punch I mean it came beautifully out of camera but it needs more contrast I don't know why I shot so so flat today because I mean look at the image that's the way it came out of camera and that's the way it could look if you if you apply a little post-production to it really good awesome by the way uh, it says Glück right here which means luck okay let's let's give this uh, let's give the images a rating the images that we touched so we can uh, have a look at them um, once we're through here okay what do we have here a beautiful black and white shot look at this graffiti I mean isn't that beautiful let's try to paste the look that we created maybe it's a little too much contrast for this one but after all I think these graffiti shots they really need to yeah I like the I like the punchiness of the of the concrete and I also like the softness of the sprayed color so that works together perfect that would make an, a really nice print I think I need to print this image let's try to let's try to go on yeah this was that that's everything from the Hall of Fame actually I spent like maybe five minutes there not that much and then I went on found some let's call it architecture let me see what uh, I mean the image is great it's it's a little flat but I like I mean there the, the, the thing is you would not need to do anything to this picture it's not the greatest shot that I've ever taken but I still like it but you know if you apply some settings to this image I mean clarity structure look how much this image really um, improves let's look at the before it's like this and now it's like that I mean yeah good thing let's uh, straighten this image so that it's leveled and we are set that's it I mean we could also play around with the contrast in the sky let's add a layer to that like that uh, create a mask over there yes add contrast bring the exposure down I mean you can edit 
JPEX from the Fuji X-T3 and all the other Fuji cameras without any problems. So most of the times there is no need to shoot raw. Um, you can shoot raw, but yeah, you can see, you see that JPEGs are really fine from the Fujis. Okay, let's go on. We've ha I found this beautiful bridge. Again, the image comes out of camera just beautiful. There is nothing you would need to do. Um, but I'm always so tempted to touch the images and to increase clarity and structure not too much because yeah i mean for architecture shots you can you can really add a lot of uh clarity and structure and contrast and whatever you like it doesn't look bad if you have like landscape or portrait stuff then you need to be more careful let's bring the highlights down a little bit yes check for focus check the image quality by the way this is ISO ISO 640 yeah I'm um, what might be interesting for you is that today I hit the road with just one lens um, I was unsure whether to pick the 16 1.4 on which I'm filming now or the 23 1.4 and I decided to get the 23 uh, to put it on the on the Fuji X-T3 so just because the 16 sometimes is a little bit too wide and I'm always telling people that the 23 is an awesome lens it's if I would only have just one lens it would be the 23 it's a really capable lens it provides an awesome field of view and I really enjoy working with it okay as you can see we are now in a completely different spot and this is also shot at f1.4 so that's why we're getting out of focus pretty quickly but i still love the image i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do with that <laughs> i mean i want to do some post-processing but honestly we're going to leave it like it is it's beautiful Okay, let's go on finally some more black and white shots let's add contrast here and add some clarity I mean it uh, let's let's reduce the contrast again I'm not sure what to do it's probably quite too bright to add uh, to do proper post processing right now I should do that once it gets a little darker but hey look at that image you, you see a little grain in here I mean this is ISO 160 but if we want to we can reduce that without any problems turn it up I mean we're at 300% let's zoom out uh, this is 100% beautiful clean image straight not straight out of camera but uh, this is straight out of camera and this is my processing I do also love the color version of that let's play with that that's interesting but too much let's reset that okay I found some more interesting architectural stuff right between through the leaves i was not quite sure about the depth of field that i wanted to create here and you can see i changed film simulations in between these shots but i think i prefer this one and you can see this is um, 400 percent magnification right here uh, it's sharp as hell this is f11 let's zoom out man 
I'm really excited to get through these images now. Um, I think it's also amazing to see what you can achieve when you go out and shoot with just one focal length. I mean, if you have the 23 or if you have the 18 to 55 or 16 to 55, um, you should try take, to take a piece of tape and tape it down to 23 millimeters and go out and force yourself to use that or any other focal length for a full day. Um, I'm sure it's gonna be a challenge but I'm sure it's gonna improve your photography a lot. I also like this image and this image. Man, I must say I took some quite images, uh, some quite some nice images today. Look at this one. I mean, black and white works beautifully in in for nature shots. Let's add some. Let's add some contrast. Make it a little brighter. You can see, uh, Capture One still performs pretty good even though I have the screen recording running in parallel here which um, makes my MacBook quite hot right now but it still responds pretty good I'm, I think, I mean, this is going to be different when you process raw, raw images but um, yeah, let's talk about this shot this is one of the images um, in which I wished that I would have taken a um, a macro lens with me or I had a 16 because the 16 really does give you quite good macro capabilities. But this is still an awesome shot. Let's rotate it. I think it's supposed to be like that. Increase the structure. Let's go back in, increase clarity, structure, see what it looked like before. Yeah, this might be too much for some of you, but I really need this structure to stand out. And that's why I like to, to increase these values in post-production. All right, here you can see a really contrasty shot. And a really flat shot, uh, shot <laughs> right next to that. Uh, I think this really demonstrates pretty well how much you can play with the film simulations inside the camera. Let's go on. I mean, look at the depth of field and the sharpness and everything. These images come out so good straight out of camera no post-production from what you see in the first place I know I start playing around with uh, I played around with some images but the first thing that you see whenever I switch to a new image is straight out of camera yeah we are now in the forest I like this one let's give it a rating And I mean, these images are nice, but um, as I told you, they are mainly just a first test for me or a second test for me to play around with the Fuji X-T3 and um, to, see, to see how the way the film simulations work, to get to know the camera, to play around and yeah, it's just what I the kind of images that I took today while enjoying the weather and yeah it was not mainly a photography day it was more or less a free day today in which I took some photographs yes I mean the 23 is crazy sharp I could use that lens for for everything. I, I love the field of view. Um, 
and I really love look at that tree isn't that crazy and I love that you can really create a shallow depth of field with that lens that's an image that really shows it pretty good this is at f1.4 and um, it's still reasonably sharp at 1.4 it's not the best subject to test sharpness I would say but um, let's go to this image this one is f1.4 as well so let's go in here and you can see it's perfect and there's nothing to complain it's not that the edges aren't sharp the thing is that I had a round subject here and you cannot test edge sharpness um, at open aperture with a round subject that doesn't work out okay let's go to one of my favorite spots today look at these clouds isn't that beautiful I mean this screams for black and white but color is beautiful as well I like the more punchy blacks you can see kind of how I played with the camera settings here here we have really bright shadows and here we have really dark shadows so these two images really show you what you can get out of the camera without any uh, post-production on the computer beautiful let's give this one a rating and increase clarity and structure and contrast even more zoom in one more time just to see what's going on here is there somebody working no nobody is working there yeah I'll give it a rating so we can uh, whoops so that we can find this image later what's going on so yeah what else do we have yeah we had these beautiful shadows and reflections on the ground oh man these shots are these are beautiful I like these kind of shots I mean there is not really a subject here but I love the reflections and the structures and everything it looks beautiful one of my favorite shots from today is probably this one and this one let's take this one increase structure clarity and contrast even more yes simple and clean and easy I mean it came good out of camera but it needs more punch I think that was all that I was able to to get um, sometimes I wish that I would not be limited to um, plus five with the contrast settings for shadows and highlights but I can I can work with that it's it's okay we have some more reflection stuff I like that one as well increase contrast structure and exposure lovely shot yeah we got some something to play here <laughs> I mean I like taking selfies every now and then that's crazy if you would like to create that image in Photoshop it would be quite hard <laughs> it's it's just a reflection on the ground I look at this structure in the sharpness and everything beautiful man that could be my new uh, profile picture yeah and now we're gonna go to one of the final images that we that I want to talk about today which is this one I really enjoy this image I mean still a lovely shot 
without any post-production but I guess I'm not able to to leave the buttons alone I need to touch something here let's bring the highlights down again increase contrast bring the shadows up a little bit let's check for the exposure it's awesome so yeah already finished I mean it was good the way it was like this yeah and sometimes if you need to react to certain situations um, it's not possible to fine-tune the image the way you really want it to be so you need to do it afterwards which is fine <laughs> Let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to share with you. I was not, I'm not quite sure. Maybe this one is also worth sharing. Let's, let's turn it a little bit, a little rotation. Whoa, not that much. <laughs> a little rotation and uh, contrast, structure, clarity, more contrast. Yeah, maybe like this. I mean, it's the sky was so beautiful today. Really beautiful. I love the sky. Yeah, I mean, these, let's, let's go through them again. These are the images from today's little um, photo walk with my XT3 and the 23. Um, I'm gonna insert a slideshow of the images and the way that I edited these images. Um, we're gonna have a new video coming up, coming up pretty soon about Capture One, which I think will be really helpful and important for all of you Fuji photographers, especially since the raw conversion engine is way better than Lightroom and I think a lot of people work in Lightroom and are not happy with the results so that's what we're gonna do uh, as soon as I find the time to do it and uh, in the meantime yeah hopefully uh, you enjoyed having a look at some images today and I would really be happy if you hit the like button subscribe to my channel and uh, yeah I'm happy to read your comments. See you next time. Thanks for watching. See you.